Okay, thanks. Um, so, as Tony said, I'm Marcus Ransom. I'm the lead Apple technician at RMIT University in Melbourne. And today we're going to talk about Active Directory. I'm going to start with a quick look at Active Directory and what it does. Um, we're going to look at some of the tools that can help us when we're binding to Active Directory. And we're also going to look at some of the tools we can use that can eliminate the need to bind to Active Directory. And then some ideas on how to make a decision as to whether you're going to bind or not. Um, there's many different directory services available. There's Open Directory, eDirectory, Okta, things like that. Um, rather than discuss the merits of one directory service over another, um, we're going to look specifically at Microsoft Windows Active Directory and the different ways you can leverage the services it provides to OS X. Um, so what is a directory service? Um, Wikipedia says and it's fairly long. A directory service is a shared information infrastructure for locating, managing, administering, and organizing common items and network resources, which can include volumes, folders, files, printers, users, groups, devices, telephone numbers, and other objects. In simple language, it's a list of users in a hierarchy, uh, including information such as email addresses and phone numbers. And it can be used to authenticate or authorize to services and systems can also include a list of devices that are integrated into the directory. And it can be used to apply configurations based on membership of groups in this hierarchy. There's two very different ways you can integrate into this directory service. You can establish a trust relationship between the device and the directory service known as binding. Or you can take a different approach, which is simply leveraging the information within this directory service to define what the experience for the user of this machine is going to be. So do you manage? the user or do you manage the device? If you take the approach of binding and managing the device, um, Apple's offered the native plugin um, for binding to AD since 10.3 in Panther. And the traditional methods of leveraging computer management was also to bind to an open directory server and use workgroup manager to perform Mac specific configurations, otherwise known as the golden triangle. Um, for the purpose of today, we're going to focus on the active directory component of this. The Active Directory plugin allows you to establish a trust between the computer and Active Directory, and that allows users in Active Directory to log into the machine with those credentials and configure some of the parameters that dictate what the user experience is going to be, whether their home directory is locally on the machine, whether it's on a server, or whether it's a hybrid of the two. Um, we can also dictate which users are going to have admin rights on the machines based on membership. You can also configure all of this by the command line. So you've got dsconfigad and dscl. They're your friends. You can script all of this stuff so it can happen without needing to um, interact with the GUI. You can also query Active Directory to see how it was set up. And you can also use that for anything you need to do on the machine. So as well as using Apple's native plugin to bind machines to AD, there's a couple of third-party plugins that as well as offering all of the features of the native plugin, um, they add some additional functionality. Um, Thursby, admit back, um, that can deliver management via group policies. That's something AD doesn't really do out of the box. Um, it uses MCX for that. It can also integrate smart cards and two-factor authentication. Um, Centrify Mac management, um, that's quite fully featured. It also includes MDM, so it can manage configuration profiles, um, file vault, um, 8021X, it's got a streamlined workflow for enabling AD certificate support. Um, once again, it also includes smart card support. Um, both of these tools are really good at describing the process of configuring a Mac using Windows friendly terminology. So they talk about group policy a lot. Um, it can often be misinterpreted as having some kind of special source that allows your existing set of group policies for Windows to suddenly take effect on Macs. You can see a lot of organizations think that they can get this plugin integrated, and then all of a sudden, all of the management systems they've set up for their Windows machines are now just going to apply to the Macs. There's an extremely small subset of Windows group policy objects that are cross-platform, but generally you need to create a new set of policies for the Macs, not just Windows items that are not directly compatible, 
but there's also Mac-specific settings that don't exist in Windows, things like Gatekeeper, File Vault. Um, most of these products also still rely on Workgroup Manager and MCX to perform this configuration. Um, I'd probably be a little bit dubious of a product that still relies on Workgroup Manager. Um, most of it's moved across con to configuration profiles. So out of interest, is there anyone here that's using any of those third-party plugins for AD to manage their fleet at all? No, that, that's interesting. Now, why do we bind to AD? So some of the reasons we may decide to bind machines, it's primarily for user authentication. If you're wanting multiple people to be able to log into a machine or to be able to log into different machines across the organisation, then binding to AD is a really good solution for that. Now, if you're required to use network home directories, so the user folder can follow people around to different machines, then that's probably a good way to go as well. So if binding to AD offers all of these additional features, then why would you just not do that as default on every machine? So Apple have their Active Directory white paper um, in their training site, showing the ins and outs of binding to AD, all of the information about DS config AD. It's really powerful, completely configurable. But it says users who transition between a variety of networks require a different strategy. Now they're saying if you're not always connected to the domain controller, you might not want to bind to AD. Now, why would that be? Because sometimes there is issues. The keychain. <laughs> Has anybody had issues with the keychain and AD users? Okay, we've got a lot of hands going up. Users often may not log off their machines for extended periods of time. During that time, they may have changed their AD password, or they may have changed it outside of the operating system. They may have called up the help desk. I've forgotten my password, can you change it? They may have gone to the web portal that you provide for resetting your password. They may have reset on a different machine. Then they get this dialogue. What's highlighted by default? Do nothing. Can, yeah, well, it doesn't say do nothing. It says continue login. And a lot of users will go, OK, which says do nothing. Then they see something <laughs> like this, um, which can't really be described as a good user experience. Apple should fix the keychain. It's one of the questions I hear all the time. Why doesn't Apple fix the keychain so it's automatically synced with your AD password? Like a mobile account. You update your AD password, your keychain gets updated as well. So when you log in, everything just works. If you think about it, the security and privacy implications of this are quite scary. Think about the kind of passwords you might have stored in your keychain, especially on a work machine. You might have your personal email, Twitter, Facebook. Think about who has the ability to reset your Active Directory password. An administrator at the organisation can reset your Active Directory password. That makes sense because that's used for accessing corporate resources. So that goes without saying. They have the right to do that, to lock you out or grant you access to something but they also now potentially have access to a whole raft of your personal information. So it's actually in your best interest that the keychain does not automatically sync with AD. Um, it's actually doing its job. It's also important to note that if you access services that are not Kerberized and save the password in your keychain, when you update the keychain by not pressing continue, it only updates the keychain password not any of the instances of that password that are saved inside the keychain. File Vault and Active Directory users. Sort of the same as the keychain. If the password is updated outside of the operating system, the user then needs to log in at the preboot login screen with their old cached password. And then they should, once the operating system has started, connect to the domain controller, and the operating system identifies that the cache password doesn't match the one in AD. The user should be presented with a login window where they need to log in with their new password. Once they've successfully logged in and gone through the tricky keychain prompts, which they're going to get because the password has changed, the operating system should update the FileVault preboot login to then use the new password. 
This doesn't always work as planned. If your machine takes too long to communicate with a domain controller, it might log in with a cached password. So given these issues, why would we bind to AD? You know, when we're asking ourselves whether we should be binding to AD or not, these are often the sort of answers to the questions that are provided, especially by our organisation. Fairly arbitrary, open concepts that don't really help. It's our corporate policy. Um, security, management, certificates, consistency. We bind everything to Active Directory. We want everyone to have the same experience regardless of what kind of machine they're logging into. Do we bind these to Active Directory? I, I think users can often work out you know, whether they need to log in with Active Directory credentials or not. So we need to change the questions we're asking when we're trying to decide. Rather than asking, should we bind, or what's often the case, we must bind, we really need to define what our actual requirements are. Now, your friendly InfoSec team will or should have a list of policies that the machines in your organisation or machines that use your network have to adhere to. Now, if their platform policies are skewed towards one particular platform, um, you might want to work with them to define a set of requirements that allows you to make better decisions with Mac OS X around how to configure your fleet. Now, in my experience, InfoSec teams love having discussions with platform teams around how they're best able to secure their endpoints. So, here's some of the tools you can have to achieve these objectives. Things like, we want directory user logins. We want to manage the password. We want network drives to mount. Certificates. Um, group policy. So what are some tools that can achieve this in an unbound environment? Um, Curbminder is a really useful open source tool that can renew any Kerberos tickets that your machine is using, whether it's bound to Active Directory or not. Users can authenticate to network drives, printers or any other Kerberized services using AD authentication and don't have to enter the password multiple times. And this tool is also useful for AD bound machines with users who have either logged, off, logged on outside of the domain or have done something else that means they haven't triggered a Kerberos ticket renewal. AD Passmon is another great tool. That allows users to keep track of how long it is until their AD password expires. Once again, this is also useful for AD users who don't ever log off their machines, as the login is when the default prompt for an impending password change is delivered. So AD Passmon displays the number of days until the password expiry in the menu bar and gives access to a couple of tools. And it also includes Curbminder that we saw before um, and can integrate password expiry messages into the notifi notification center. One of my colleagues at RMIT, Tanya Dastras, created a tool for our staff to connect to network shares. We called it the RMIT Network Connector. Um, uses Coco Dialog, um, leverages the KNIT tool to grab a Kerberos ticket, which is then used for printing and file shares. And it mounts the file shares, the network home and our DFS share, putting them in the dock so they're easily accessible. So, you know, if you've got specifics in your particular environment, there's lots of ways that you can achieve this. Now, Apple have recently started providing a tool for AD integration to their professional services customers. It's not currently available here in Australia, um, as we don't have a professional services team here, but Europe and the US have been using this tool and it looks really interesting. It can enhance the user experience on a machine that's bound to AD, but it can also provide a user interface allowing authentication to services using AD on machines that are not actually bound. So you can see up in the top of the dock, um, there's a little Enterprise Connect icon, and that changes colour if it can detect the domain controller, whether you're bound or not. Um, it can auto automatically request or renew Kerberos tickets and allows you to change your password or view expiry information. Enterprise Connect can detect the domain controller or even a particular server that you specify. It can also configure network shares to automatically mount when it detects that they're available on the network. So unlike the AD plugin that will mount your network home directory on login, but if you drop a network connection, disconnects the folder, you've got to try and reconnect it again, Enterprise Connect will detect that you're back on the domain and reconnect any of these shares. Now, every AD environment can be different um, and quite complex. So, 
group policy for password expiration, especially, um, can manifest in different forms. So that's why access to the tool requires time from Apple professional services engineers to ensure it's, everything's configured correctly. Um, lobby your Apple representatives if you'd like to see Enterprise Connect here. Um, is there anyone here that thinks that would be a really interesting tool to be able to use in their environment? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend contacting your, um, your systems engineer or anyone else from Apple and just seeing if this, this is something that may be able to be made wider, wide, more widely available. So what else can we do to provide AD-like features without binding? So security policies for AD users, especially passwords, can be applied to local users with a configuration profile. So you can see here there's a lot of versatility around password complexity that you can achieve. You can also do this with a PLIST file. Um, this can be especially useful if you want to exclude certain accounts, like tech admins, um, from a password rotation policy. And the sheer volume of items that can be managed with configuration profiles is growing with every release of the operating system. The custom settings items are especially useful for managing items that don't yet have a category. Um, things like configuring third-party software. You can also use this Python tool that Tim Sutton's created, MCX to Profile, to convert any MCX records that you'd like to use in configuration profile. So it's interesting to see how many people in the Mac admins community have created these really awesome tools and are really happy to just share them with anyone else to use them. How do we align with corporate policies? We can look at things like password policies on local accounts, preventing auto login, adding password unlock to the screensaver so that access to the machine is controlled. Uh, things like file vault management. We can do all of these things without requiring a machine being bound to AD. We can also dispel the fallacy that Active Directory is going to provide this experience. Now, our AD username and password isn't the only username and password we interact with. You know, the idea of we can't have a local account because we want to reduce the number of usernames and passwords. Well, it's probably only reducing it by one and we're still going to need a passcode to access iOS devices. We're still going to need lots of other access points to get into places. You know, there's single sign-on benefits. So, you know, we have to use Active Directory so we can get single sign-on. Now, I know in our environment, many of our services aren't Kerberized, so the password's still got to get saved into the keychain and be updated when the password's rotated. So binding to Active Directory isn't going to solve those problems. Consistent user and support experience. As I said before, that's a false sense of consistency. Support staff need to be aware of the differences between a Mac and PC when providing support. They can't use the same script that they use for, I'm having difficulty logging into a Windows machine as they use on a Mac, because things are going to manifest in very different ways. Um, binding to AD doesn't automatically mean that you're going to have the same experience. Um, we need the ability to lock out users. If a user's left the organisation or there's a particular reason, we need to be able to lock staff out. Well, really only if they're on site. Um, you know, we can achieve this with MDM, um, all sorts of other solutions. It can actually give us the ability to lock or remote wipe a machine off site. As we've seen, there's lots of existing tools that can achieve the outcomes that are desired. But there's also other considerations. Some of the reasons we might, might want to steer clear of binding is that we can achieve many of the same principles with much better and fully featured tools than Active Directory offers. Um, you know, using things like Casper or Monkey or any of the other MDM tools, you can actually do things that are targeted specifically for the Mac uh, ecosystem. A mobile work workforce that's not always on the corporate network. Um, password changes, reboots, and the simple act of logging in may happen off network more often than non. So, you know, we need to kind of design a solution that embraces that. Uh, we may start using other single sign on or identity tools other than Active Directory that are integrated with our workforce being mobile. We may start moving to cloud based identity management. Um, which is a, a very different experience. User experience has got to be our prime um, consideration. 
is this going to work for the people using the machines? Are we going to provide them with the sort of productivity that they need? Um, or is it going to be compromised at the extent of binding to Active Directory? So I'm interested in hearing what all of you are doing in your environments with respect to binding. So how many people here are binding all of their Macs to Active Directory? How many people are binding some of their Macs to Active Directory? How many people are not binding at all? How many people would like to stop binding to Active Directory? What are the reasons? Does anyone want to talk about some of the reasons? No. Uh, we're still using Active Directory 2003. Is there any, yeah. anyone else still on? No, it doesn't work well with uh, El Capitan. Um, you have to manually create the objects on a Windows machine. Because, uh, and they, our organisation, is uh, there's no roadmap for updating it, so we're stuck with 2003. So what, what's your plan? Are you... Um... I, I would just like to get just have the Macs off the directory um, and uh, have an app that can bind drives. Um, that would solve most issues, I think, yeah. Do you, do you require multiple people to log into the machines, or are they generally... No, just single user yeah. machines, yeah. Yeah, okay. Are you getting resistance from the organisation? Yeah, yeah, the uh, InfoSec people. Just, uh... what, what sort of... What sort of uh, justifications and requirements are they using? Uh, just the policy. They want the policy that's on Windows to be the policy on Macs. It's yeah. just, uh, yeah. We're a s small part of the population and they um, don't want to deviate. Yeah. Is anybody else um, would like to migrate away from Active Directory? My thing is, I would not necessarily, so to give a bit of background, we've put a lot of effort into setting up our directory services so that you have one username and password that pretty much unlocks everything. You can, uh, you log into a web service, it uses the same username and password. You log into your machine, it uses that same username and password. Email uses that same username and password. So all our folks have to remember is that one username, that one password, and it just uh, works for everything. But the problems we run into are things like keychains, and also, you know, they they're away from the office, and they get a uh, you know your password's expired. Go to this website to change it, and now their password is out of sync. And then they come back in the office. Uh, we also have folks that you know we're a research organization. We have folks that just kind of disappear for a while, and then they come back. Um, and when they come back, they're like, I don't remember what my old password was for resetting the keychain, but my secure wireless certificate lives in my login keychain, so is there anything you can do for me? Uh, and the answer, unfortunately, in that case is no, so we have to then re-enroll them in the secure wireless, and it's, it's, it's a hassle. Do, do you find this impacts on their productivity? Um, at this point, we've got procedures in place to help you know, make this as painless as possible for our users, but part of making it painless for our users involves some pain on our end, and I don't like pain. Yeah. Um, I mean, what I would really like to have happen, uh, m I think more than anything else, if I can't get away from binding altogether, I would like to use something like an LDAP proxy where I could bind to say Microsoft Azure, where it is just securely available. They can talk back to our directory service no matter where they are. As long as they've got an internet connection, they can talk back to us. Um, that would probably be not the best middle ground, but probably about as close as I'm going to get in this world. Okay. Any Anybody else um, have any um, plans to migrate away from Active Directory? Is there anybody who plans to migrate to Active Directory or, or, um, or feels that um, there are reasons that Active Directory work for them? I, I know in our situation at RMIT, we've got our lab fleet of about... 1,200 Macs around the university that all students need to be able to log into. So that 
But that's a no-brainer. They need to be bound to Active Directory, so any one of our 90,000 students can walk up to it and log in. But our staff machines are predominantly one-to-one, -one. so you know it 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 just doesn't make sense um, for for us. So I suppose what that really comes down to is what is the answer? The answer is it depends. Um, Active Directory is certainly not evil. Active Directory um, is very good at what it does. Um, so the important thing is to find a configuration that works in your environment. Now, different organizations have different expectations and the machines can be used in very different ways. We also live in a changing world. So what was the best approach the last time we looked at it may not necessarily be the case in the future. Um, so reassessing how your fleet is set up based on what you're actually having to deal with is, is probably the, the, the easiest way to, to react to these changes. So thanks very much for listening. Um, as Tony said, um, I'm Marcus Ransom. Um, you can find me on the Mac Admins Slack channel, usually hanging out in the ANZ Mac, um, Mac room there. Um, I also convene a group called Melbourne Apple Admins that meets every couple of months um, in Melbourne. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who come along to the Melbourne Apple Admins meetings here. It'd be great to see some more people uh, to come along. So uh, these slides will be made available with all of the links to these tools. Um, thanks for listening. Oh, yeah, if we've got any more questions, certainly. Yeah. Um, not so much a question, but more just, um, just an observation of yeah. how things are changing in the industry in, in general. So the perception in our environment right now is, well, perception, but the user, use case is if it's a machine that's provided, that's configured out of the box, it's got all the core applications that the university requires and so forth, all that stuff is taken care of. And so once you set up that user experience, that expectation, and that's the user behavior they've got across all the other uh, machines they currently use, it's kind of hard to remove it. But there's an opportunity for everyone here to basically change that behavior as we move on to BOD as a, as a yeah. big piece of work that's coming on board. So people will get used to using portals mainly, where they mm -hmm. can use their normal password for the institution and so forth. DEP kind of makes that seamless in the background. So rather than try to change what's happened and what's, what's historically uh, the, the case, moving forward, if you start with the simplification of DEP and then start introducing small things in, you can forget about AD and just go, no, no, the, the device is enrolled, it's secured because of these reasons. And it goes forward. So, just an observation. Or anything else on that particular case study? Yeah. No. It's uh, it's it's certainly true that um, also being aware of what's coming. So there may be some of these things like DUP that you're not currently using. But you may see that you know it's on the horizon. Um, you know, a, a lot of large organisations are, are moving to choose your own device, where it really is treated like BYOD that um, they pay for it, but you're you're expected to manage it yourself. Um, and being aware of the implications of that and what services that you provide will also need to be updated uh, to deal with that. So, yeah, thanks, friend. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Marcus. Yeah.